price of the Marine Air Wing? Uh, Marine Air Wing out here in Afghanistan, we have uh, Cobras, Hueys, 53Es, 53Ds, uh, V-22s, C-130J uh, uh, aircraft, and uh, AV-8Bs. Those are our flying squadrons. Uh, we also have uh, Marine Wing Support Squadron, which uh, provides all our aviation logistics. We have a Marine Air Logistics Squadron, uh, which does uh, all the parts and uh, keeps the airplanes flying. And we also have a, a debt of Marine Air Control Group, which provides our command control and radars and the Direct Air Support Center, uh, those sorts of things. So, uh, pretty, pretty tight group. Now you're spread through RC Southwest, or you're headquartered here in, in uh, Camp Leatherneck. We're headquartered here in Camp, Camp Leatherneck, but I have Marines in uh, Kandahar, uh, down at Dwyer. Uh, I have Marines uh, up in uh, Fobs, up by Sangin and uh, Edinburgh, and also uh, some folks up in uh, Delaron. Okay. Do the British report to you? Uh, the British are take on to me, which means. Uh, that our tasking, you know, they take our tasking from our C2 system. Uh, they have their own uh, logistics, they have their own uh, 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 battlefield management kind of guys and engineers. Uh, but we coordinate our, our operations very closely and uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, British aircraft will fly for uh, Brits and uh, American aircraft will fly for Marines. However, uh, that line is blurred uh, due to operational requirement. We still have the same common headquarters, uh, and we uh, we fly for the Brits all the time, and they fly for us. In fact, uh, uh, Tricky, which is the, the call sign of one of their uh, uh, medevac aircraft that has a uh, surgical team aboard, uh, we use it to, uh, regardless of uh, service, and that is a that is a very capable trauma aircraft. So, you know, IEDs, amputations, very traumatic uh, injuries, we we'll send them out. It doesn't matter if it's a Marine. Or a British soldier. Yeah. Joe, with the war in Afghanistan being one of clear whole build transition, which entails close upfront contact, either fighting or building relationships, how does the Marine Air Wing fit into that? Well, uh, our number one job, as it's been ever since our, uh, our founding, is to support the Marines on the ground. Uh, out here, uh, we have a big swath of territory, uh, our troops are dispersed. So we are the connection for them for uh, fire support from the air, uh, logistic support. We move them around and give them uh, battlefield mobility. We can uh, put them behind the enemy, and we can put them on new, new pieces of ground. Uh, that's the uh, clear, clear piece. Uh, the whole piece, we uh, uh, can get, move them around the battlefield so that uh, the enemy can't reinforce their, their own folks. We also provide the medevac, and uh, when you have people spread out like this, it's very, very important. Uh, they have all the, you know, the, the traditional beans, bowls, and band-aids, and they have it all the time. Uh, so when they're in contact with the enemy, we're there. Um, there's three missions that uh, we will not fail to do. Uh, that's in troops in contact when they need fire support. That is uh, emergency uh, medevac and CASAVAC. Uh, when our Kazovac aircraft are, uh, are elsewhere employed, and uh, Mercy Resupply, which is uh, something as old as Vietnam. Uh, the, if the troops get into, into uh, contact out there and they run out of ammunition, uh, we're, we're going in no matter what. Uh, so that's what we do. We also do some interdiction uh, missions out here, which, which entail trying to cut the line of money supply in the Taliban, which uh, a, a great deal of, uh, of the time involves uh, them moving uh, poppy and, uh, and heroin and, and opium. So we, uh, we interdict that. Uh, so we're busy. I would imagine. Yeah, because the, the interdiction's got to be down in the Baluchistan Desert, north of uh, uh, Barnum Chot. That's a pretty barren area. That's yeah, not that's, my uh, Some goes down there, some goes to the west. Uh, it's. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot easier to catch someone uh, with our with our assets uh, when they're out in the desert. Yeah. It's uh, very much harder when they're uh, weaving around in the populated areas. Okay. The Marines and the Afghan Army are doing more and more together. Are you ferrying the Afghan Army around along with the Marines? Yes. Yeah. We uh, 
uh, if it's a, you as partner or mentored, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, if it's not that uh, that uh, RC and the, and the division want to do, you know, we'll, uh, we'll we'll put them on on our aircraft and we'll fire them around and provide them ground support or fire support when we need to. Okay. Do they have forward air controllers who are able to turn around and work with with work with the Marines? Right, you're, right you're now, separately. Yeah, you know, right now uh, the JTAX Joint Tactical Air Controllers are Americans. Uh, that's something we'll have to work our way, way through in the next couple of years. Yeah. Are you working with the Afghan Air Force at all? Uh, I have not worked with the Afghan Air Force. Uh, they have flown in this area periodically. We are supposed to be getting some uh, some Afghan Air Force assets down here. When they do, uh, we will uh, take them under our umbrella and we will uh, show them how we operate and, uh, and get them operating in our command and control okay. system. Now, do they have helicopters or helicopters and jets? Uh, they have uh, helicopters and some fixed wing. Uh, I don't believe they have any fighters yet, but I'm not sure. The right person asked that is the, uh, is the uh, Air Force liaison put, set them up up in Kabul. Okay, fair enough. With the medevacs you do, are you also medevacing civilian IED casualties and civilians? Is there a ratio of civilian to military? There, there's no ratio that we uh, follow. Uh, anybody that's hurt out of the battlefield, uh, you know, uh, if we get a call, uh, a nine line drops, we, we'll go get them. And we lift a lot of uh, local nationals. I, I don't know what the percentage is right now, uh, but uh, if you're wounded on the battlefield, whether you're civilian or uh, uh, Afghan National Army or Marine or, or any coalition force, that, that matter, we'll matter back them. That's going to be a confidence builder for the, local, for the Afghan locals, knowing that if something happens to the Taliban, they're not turned into suicide bomber. They will actually help them and bring them yes. to the hospital. Yes, uh, you know, on, on a number of occasions, uh, the uh, commander of the 215th Corps and his deputy and some of the brigade commanders have told me that one thing that keeps uh, their morale up, their troops, and keeps them in the fight is the knowledge that we will take care of them if they get hurt. Uh, and that's and that's not unique to the Afghan National Army, uh, any army, uh, any Marine Corps, any any. Anybody who fights for their country, uh, you know, their their morale is going to be higher if they know they're going to get taken care of. Okay. General, what else do you want to tell us about the Marine Air Wing uh, here in Afghanistan? Well, you know, number one, it's uh, of all the Marines in the Air Wing out here, they, they wouldn't wouldn't be anywhere else. Uh, all of them are volunteers. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, we brought in a uh, detachment. Of, of Cobras to, to put down south for operations down there. Uh, it was not a full squadron. Uh, when the CO got out here, he told me uh, I, I had the best uh, the best with me I had. I brought all my top guys. I said, well, I expect that. I said, no, you don't understand. When we were limited to the number of people we could bring out here, uh, there was actually fights breaking out, out in the hangar on who could go and who couldn't. So, so the uh, crew chiefs and the mechanics were, you know, they wanted to come here to to the point where they were they were willing to willing to uh, make an issue with their friends in the squadron. So uh, everybody out here wants to be out here. Uh